40 years since the horrific hostage crisis which saw 20 people killed on Pan Am Flight 73. Well, ahead of a new documentary, one survivor has been coming to terms with the experience which saw him face death and yet survive. Here to tell us his incredible story is Mike Fexton. Mike, it, it must be everybody's worst nightmare to get on a plane and find that it's been hijacked by terrorists. Tell us, tell us what happened and how close you came to... Uh, to suffering the, uh, the, the, the ultimate price? Um, I was coming back from a mountaineering expedition in northern Pakistan, um, and I was travelling alone. I'd rearranged my flight trying to get home as quickly as possible. Um, boarded this Pan Am jumbo jet in Karachi Airport um, early in the morning of Friday the 5th of September 1986. And while I was still standing by my seat, unpacking a book from my hand luggage. Uh, a couple of terrorists appeared in the two doorways, uh, struggling with the flight attendant, telling the, another flight attendant to close the door. And um, they took over the plane. And right at the beginning, the pilots escaped. Um, now, they got a certain amount of criticism for that at the time. But even on the plane, when I realized that that, that must have been what happened, I was, I was very grateful we weren't going to be flying anywhere. Um, so we were stuck on the ground. Uh, after a while, they they shot somebody and threw them out of the plane to emphasise that they meant business. And uh, then they asked one of the flight attendants to collect in passports. Um, they seemed to be looking for Americans. And although it wasn't really her problem, uh, with incredible bravery and ingenuity, she decided not to put white Americans in the bag. Uh, she just got rid of them, hid them. Um, and when she went back, she they sorted out all the American passports. She showed them that these people were all uh, had uh, Indian and Pakistani faces and names and convinced him that there weren't any Western Americans on the plane. Uh, which promoted the British as the next most unpopular people, um, and they picked mine. So they called me to the front of the plane, and I was their chief bargaining counter for about 12 hours. And you want to tell us what actually yeah. they did to you? Um, because this must have been the most horrendous moment of your life. Um, well, so far, yes. Uh, I hope that, it, that I won't have many more like that. Um, they called me forward, and I was sure that they were going to shoot me. I, I couldn't think of any other reason that they would they would have picked me out. I couldn't quite understand why they were picking on the British. Um, I was sure that on a Pan Am plane, surely there were some Americans. Um, but uh, I got to the front of the plane and the, the, this, this, um, the leader had my passport in his hand. Um, he asked me um, who I was and where I was from and if I had a gun, which um, I actually laughed at because I was probably close to hysterics. I said, no, you, you, you've got all the guns around here. Um, and then he got me to kneel uh, in the doorway of the plane. Uh, there were four flight attendants there who had seen him shoot the man half an hour before. So they, they really knew what was happening, uh, whereas I only sort of imagined it. Um, and what had they told the negotiators? Yeah. What had they Sorry. told the negotiators they were going to do if the demands weren't met? Yes, he told them, uh, if anyone comes near the plane, uh, if any US troops come near the plane, we will kill one body immediately. Um, he had a, a Kalashnikov rifle. Um, he clearly was going to use it. Um, and I was convinced that he would, you know, that uh, at that moment, the negotiator on the on the ground and uh, Mike, got things, him. Things seemed to get worse and worse, didn't they? Because you're on the plane there for 15 hours. The energy for the planes draining away. The lights go dim. The lights mm. then go out and the terrorists panic. What happens then? They they just put me back with the others as the um, uh, as the light started to go down. They put me back into the main cabin, uh, and I suddenly thought, "I'm, you know, I stand a chance here because um, I'm just one of the crowd now, uh, rather than front of the queue." And uh, you could tell though that something was about to happen. And in the darkness, one of them threw a hand grenade. That's what I remember first: the bang of a hand grenade, and then 
automatic gunfire from the front of the plane, a few rows in front of me, and then from the back of the plane, sounding very distant because it's it's a it's it's a big plane, and then from the front of the plane, and then from the back of the plane, random um, mayhem. Um, and I looked up. Um, I, my recollection is that they ran out of ammunition. They just stopped, uh, and in the relative silence afterwards and in the darkness i looked up i could see the doors were open and i jumped out onto the wing and slid off the back of the wing and dropped onto the ground and picked myself up and ran away and i i can still actually picture the, the silhouette of the plane against the night sky and i was just thinking i'm dreaming i'm i'm i can't possibly have got out of this i i will wake up in a minute and i'll be back on that plane um, Mike, extraordinarily, you've actually spoken to uh, one of your hostage takers. Uh, how yeah. did that come about? Why, why did you do that? And, and what, what did he say to you? So um, a couple of years ago, I was contacted about uh, a new documentary, this, this film, Hijacked, um, that is on Sky Documentaries today. Um, and the director, after interviewing lots of people, lots of people who are involved, um, uh, he came to see me uh, and said that he'd been in touch with the terrorist um, in his jail in America, where he is serving a 160-year sentence. Um, and although he didn't really want to give the man a voice, uh, he said he has agreed to talk to, to me. Um, and if I had any questions for him, then, then they could arrange a phone call. And I thought about it quite hard. I, I didn't really want to sort of sound as if I was being friendly with this man. Uh, but obviously, if I was going to answer questions, I, I, I would have to ask them you know, politely, uh, or else he would probably just hang up. So I had the questions, the phone call happened. Um, and I asked him the questions, and he gave me very surprising answers, I have to say. Um, the first one, the first question I asked was, why did you put me back with the others? If you were about to open fire, why, why did you not just shoot me there at the front of the plane? And that was what I was expecting uh, all day. And he said it was because I had told him right at the beginning, 12 hours earlier, please don't hurt me. My brother died in the mountains uh, of altitude sickness and my parents, you know, will, will have no one else. And he said that touched my heart. And I thought, step aside. Um, that's what that's why he said uh, he had put me back with the others. And in all the years, it had never occurred to me that he was even listening at the beginning and, of the hijack when we said that. And, Mike, this is when, you know, they had you at one point kneeling at the front of the plane with a gun to your head. This is, at that moment, this is when he yes. could have well, taken when, your when life. When I, when I came forward um, and he had my passport in his hand, um, he... Uh, and was saying, kneel here by the front door. Uh, that's when I told him about my brother. And he, he just sort of waved a hand as if to say, I'm too busy, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, I never thought he was even listening. Why is, why is the documentary take happening now, all these years later, Mike? What's, what, what, how's that come about? Um, that is a very good question. And I, I, honestly, I, I don't know. Um, uh, uh, they have made... A cracking film. I mean, it, it's it's a hard watch. It's it's a very very sad story, and there are a lot of people um, that they interview, and you can see the awful things that they've suffered. Um, but it is a very good story. I mean, the the incredible heroism of the flight attendant um, who who collected in the passports and protected the Americans um, and others. Um, and I think you know, I think there are lessons for. Um, for today, but it is surprising that after all this time they made that film. Well, Mike Fexon, thank you so much for taking the time to share that horrific story with us.